Harbour led for most of the match with Ben Bottica, son of former All Black Frano, scoring all of the home side's points in his debut. But chasing their first away win over Harbour, the Stags kept chipping away at the scoreboard. Now they look to the short side. Wilson spots a little gap. Flicks the ball in behind him. Oh, nice work. And here's by Mika Rutledge. Oh, great try. Here's a chance now for the Stags to hit back. Lynn gets it wide. Saunders. Southland's match winner was also their bonus point try. It was the Stags' fourth win from five games and moves them into top spot. After a promising start to the season, Tasman turned it on against an out-of-sorts Hawks Bayside at McLean Park. Read it like a book. The Marcos scored two early tries, but it was the penalty try they gave away that let the Magpies back in the match, trailing 17-16 at half-time. The Tasman have collapsed it deliberately, and it's a penalty try. Hawks Bay captain Jason Schumach led from the front after the break. Trying to get on, he does! While Tasman's captain Andrew Goodman's flawless goal kicking gave the Marcos a 26-23 lead late in the game before Israel Dagg and Zach Guilford produced something special for the Magpies in the dying minutes. Hawks Bay clinching the 28-26 win. Meanwhile in Whangarei, Northland were completely outclassed by Otago 29-7. He's looking for support, he finds it in Sarkot, he's so close, he's there, Adam Thompson. Flanker Adam Thompson led the way for the Southerners, scoring two of their four tries. A desperate Waikato side brought the game to County's Manukau. Inspired by the return of their All Blacks, the Mulus led 13-8 at half-time. The one that counted is over the line, and Donald is the recipient of the credit. Chance for Bruce, the line open... Waikato with the comfortable 30 points to 8 win, just their second of the season. 10,000 packed into FMG Stadium to see Manawa 2 take on Taranaki, and while both sides traded early penalties, promising first five Aaron Cruden looked to have put the turbos over the line first. At half time, Taranaki ahead 12 3. Jeff McTainch, 3 News. A warm welcome home for the most prized possession in New Zealand provincial rugby. Ranfurly Shield fever still well and truly alive in Canterbury. Oh, it's great, isn't it, coming off the plane and, you know, it's great to see all the supporters out here. A good crowd turned up to celebrate the victory. Some even managed to get their hands on the log of wood for the first time, even if it was for the briefest of moments. But Canterbury's grasp on the shield never looked in doubt after a blistering first-half display in the capital. Ball is there, and they're appealing for a try. Carter fires it off to Crotty. And got a lovely pass away to Bateman. It was a pretty special performance. Uh, we, we went out there you know, with a job to do, and we shut them out of the game and really took advantage of that. Up 26-0 at half-time, Dan Carter kept the score ticking over as Canterbury completely dominated across the park. Ooh, look at the right and scrum. Well, Murray, you don't win many games of rugby if your scrum's getting pushed like that. The knockout blow coming from hooker Corey Flynn midway through the second half. Another go at the line, Price, and try. Wellington did manage two tries, but far too late. Still going, pops it back and no. After only breaking their 26-year shield drought last year against Auckland, it had been ripped away from Wellington after just five defences, beaten 36-14. That is the end of the game. And Canterbury have taken the Ranfilly Shield off Wellington in emphatic fashion. Canterbury's first defence will be the all-southern derby against Otago in two weeks' time. Jeff McTainch, 3 News. Derby against Otago in two weeks' time. Jeff McTainch, 3 News. Auckland scored two first-half tries in the slippery conditions to lead 14-6 at the break. Inside pass Toyaba and John Rockatoko opens the scoring. And may have plenty have it. We're getting into a real tangle and Bowden scores. Joe Rokothoko crossed for his double after half-time, while the Bay of Plenty managed just one five-pointer. Auckland's win was just their second of the season. It was the Bay of Plenty's first loss.